now let's move on to the next question what is the accounting rate of return so how do you calculate accounting rate of return so what is accounting rate of return accounting rate of return means the average rate of return expected uh, on an investment uh, to calculate uh, what we need to do is we need to identify the profit after depreciation as you can see in this question uh, you are given a depreciation rate of 20% 20% on straight line basis so the total initial investment is 780000 rupees so how much is the depreciation per month 780000 per year 780000 times 20% so that will be 156000 okay so after calculating the depreciation uh, you need to identify the profit after depreciation so you are given the cash flows from the cash flow we need to deduct the depreciation amount then we need to identify since you are given the profit the cash flows over a period of five years uh, we need to identify the average net income the average net income over five years so how do you calculate that average uh, net income means from the uh, cash profit when you identify the uh, profit after depreciation you take the five year total that has to be divided by five years so thereby you can get average average profit okay this average profit then we need to divide by initial investment initial investment so thereby we can calculate the accounting rate of return okay so let's move on to the solution now let's take the uh, cash flows uh, since you are given year one year one profit is 150,000 year 2 profit is 220,000 year 3 340,000 year 4 400,000 year 5 300,000 from this deduct the depreciation that we calculated this is a depreciation depreciation amount is 156000 so every year you need to deduct the 156000 for 5 years so 156000 over 5 years So once you deduct, what is the profit after depreciation? Profit after depreciation. So this will be 6,000 loss. Then this amount will be, <clears throat> this amount will be 220,000 minus 156,000, 64,000 profit. This is the net profit. Then 340,000 minus 156. So it will be 184,000. Thereafter, 400,000 minus 156, 244,000. Then 300,000 minus 156,000. 144,000. So these are the profits after depreciation. Now what you need to do is you need to take the total 
over five years. So what is the total? What is the total profit over five years? So we have 6,000 minus, okay, minus 6,000 plus 64,000 plus 184,000 plus 244,000 plus 144,000 is equal to 630,000. Thereafter, you take the average average profit. How do you calculate the average profit? 630,000 divided by 5. That will be 126,000. So this will be 126,000. So therefore, ARR will be average profit 126,000 divided by 780,000 times 100 will give you the ARR. So divided by 780,000 times 100 is going to be 16%. So our accounting rate of return is 16%. So therefore, the correct answer out of these four answers is going to be answer number D, which is 16%. Okay. So this is the answer for the question number three. Now let's uh, move on to the question number four. What is the net present value of the project? You are given four answers. So how do you calculate the net percent value? So what is the net percent value? So basically the net percent value means it is the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows over a period of time. Okay. Uh, to calculate the net percent value, we should take the discounting factor. The discount factor is given as uh, 12%. And uh, basically the percent value, net percent value is basically the time value of money. So it is used to calculate today's value of a future stream of payments. Okay. So uh, I, I have already discussed this in the question number two when we calculate the uh, payback period, discounted payback period. So I will take you to the uh, discounting, discounted payback period. So this is how we calculated. We, uh, we took the cash flows. We took the cash flows. So these are the cash cash flows that we considered, okay? This was uh, discounted by using 12%. Then we arrived at the present value. So this is the present value, okay? So now what we need to do is, we need to take the total. So these are the discounted cash flows from year zero to year five. Okay, then we need to take the net amount. So here we need to take the net amount. So that will be the net present value. Uh, since we have already taken the cash flows, in the year zero, our initial investment was 780. The discounting factor at 12% uh, in the year zero will be one. Year one, 150,000 cash flow. And uh, our discounting factor for uh, year one will be 0.893. Year two cash flow is 220,000. So our discount factor will be 0.797. Year 3 cash flow will be 340,000. Our discount factor 0.712. Year 4 
Year 4, 400,000 discount effector will be 0.636. Year 5, 300,000 and discount effector is going to be 0.567. So once you multiply the cash flow times the discounting factor will be the present value. Okay. So year one, it will be year zero, it's going to be 780 minus because within bracket means it's minus the cash outflow. Uh, first year, the discounting, uh, the present value will be 133,950. Second year, 175,000. 340, third year 242,080, fourth year 254,400, fifth year 170,100. So now we need to take the total that will be the net present value. Okay, so let's calculate the net present value uh, minus 700 minus 780,000 plus 133,950 plus 175,340 plus 242,080 plus 254,400 and finally year 5, 170,100. So it's going to be 195,870. So this is the net present value. So now let's look at the answers. Okay, so you are given four answers of which the second answer, part B, is 195,870 exactly. So this is the net present value. As you can see, as for the calculation, we got 195,870. So this is the net present value. So how did we calculate? We took the cash flows or the period. That cash flow was discounted by using 12% discounting factor. Then we calculated the present value. Then when you take the total, when you take the total, that will be 195,870. So that is the net present value.